I can search an eternity and I will not find there is none like you. There is none like you. Oh, no one else can touch my heart like you do. Lord God, there's none like you. How many of you know there's none like our God? There's no one like him. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. There's none like you. Searched all over. Couldn't find anybody like you. No one loves us like you love us. No one cares like you cares. No one sacrifices like you do, Lord God. There's none like you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Donnell. Thank you, Ashley, for reminding us there's none like our Lord, none like our Savior, none like our God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there's none like Him. I don't know about y'all this morning, but you need to shout, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me like you love me. Nobody can love us like he can. We ought to be said, hallelujah. You can sit there and act like you don't know the God that I'm talking about. But I'm talking about a good God, a glorious God, a God that loves us in spite of ourselves. Nobody can do us like he can. Nobody can heal us like he can. Nobody can fix a situation like he can. He is a great God. He is a mighty God. Don't you love him? Don't you love him? Don't you love him? With every bit of your heart, every bit of your soul, every bit of your mind. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me like that. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you in spite of myself. You love me still. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. None, 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 none like you. And we say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praises be to your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us. Donnell and Ashley, Dr. Henry and Jocelyn, how much God loves us. And there is none like him. None. It just tears me up to think about how God loves me in spite of my wicked self. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us like that. Our scripture this morning is coming from Psalm 63. One through five. This is, this is how we do when we love God. Yeah. Oh God, you are my God. Yeah. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. 
Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus, I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. The word of God for the people of God. And let the people shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're gonna make it 
way somehow. We're gonna make it If you just have faith the size of a mustard seed Some way, somehow And you trust and believe We're gonna make it oh. With Jesus on our side gonna make it you'll make it with Jesus on our side you're gonna make it let's give God praise for our young adults praise God praise God for Donnell praise God for Ashley thank you Lord for using them in a powerful way thank you Lord God for setting the captives free through song and we give you praise thank you for reminding us thank you Dr. Henry thank you Jocelyn we're going to make it because God is with us and he is on our side. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father God. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. If you're on an organ, you ought to be praising the Lord. If you're on the piano, you ought to be praising the Lord. If you're on the drums, you ought to be praising the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If your legs are strong enough, stand on your feet and give God praise. Lift up your voice. The Lord is good. Worthy to be exalted. Worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise his holy name. Praise God. Brother Tony, you will help me for a minute. Oh, the Lord is good. Yes. Worthy to be praised. No, you have to be obedient and do what God tells you to do when he tells you to do it. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. So we're going to do a little teaching today. A little teaching today. And we're going to be, as you all know, we're, you've already heard in your hearing Psalm 63, verses 1 through 5. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. One more time in your hearing. Psalm 63. Verses 1 and 2, reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. 
My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I've looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Amen. Amen. The title of this sermon is Make Room. Make Room. A few weeks ago, actually for the last couple of months, the couples ministry, we've been going over goals and priorities and, and uh, how to put things together and what to put first. You know, and sometimes we kind of, we really don't know. Now we know what the biblical books say. They say God first, and they say spouse, and they say children and family members. Then it says others, and then some even say then yourself after everything else. But truth be told, we really don't know. Because we really don't do it how God says do it. I can't figure out if spouse is first sometimes. Then we have a couple of children, and y'all know how much time they take, so the children are there. And then, you know, I got to work. <laughs> have to work, don't we? If a man doesn't work, he doesn't. He doesn't Amen. He doesn't Amen. Then I got to take care of my home. Got to make sure that's straight. Because how can I preach to you if my home is jacked up? Amen. Amen. I'm going to look out for others, Miss Brown. I'm going to be a good Christian, Sister Dolores. Look out for others. And oftentimes, I don't know really what I'm doing. We don't really know what we're doing. And our priorities are really all out of whack. And, you know, sometimes we, we, we put one before the other. And, and we even worry about it. Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 6, don't worry. Don't worry about what you will eat. Don't worry about what you will drink. Don't worry about what you will put on. Look at the lilies in the field. Do they worry about anything? But they are arrayed better than Solomon, all of his glory. Look at the birds of the air. Do they worry about anything? He said, don't worry. And why do you worry about clothes, which you should put on? God takes care of all of that. So if God takes care of the lilies of the field, and the birds of the air, won't he take care of us? Oh, we of little faith? Huh. Jesus sums everything up. He says, but I tell you what you do. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Your house, your spouse, your job, and everything you want. Everything will be added unto you. So Jesus said, in other, in other words, in, 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 instead of us trying to get the priority right, and instead of us trying to just get everything in its right order, he said, don't even worry about any of it. But all you need to do is seek ye first the kingdom of God, God's order, God's way of doing things. And I was thinking about that the other day, Sister Brenda. I was thinking about that, and God said, son, it's really simple. See, we like to use this word priority, and sometimes it messes us up. God told me, he said, it's just like this. We need to be concerned. We use that word instead of worry sometimes. But God said, say it like this. We need to be concerned with one thing and one thing only. We need to be concerned with one person and one person only. God. Oh, we should have got some amens on that one. God. Period. <laughs> God. Period. God. The end. God. Instead of worrying about everything and running because life will have you running, Tony. Life will have you pursuing this and pursuing that. And we know we have to take care of our children and our spouse and we have to work and home and others. We know we have to do all of that. But in the pursuit of all of that, we get it twisted very quickly. Because we begin to prioritize the wrong thing. Jesus said, don't worry about any of that. Do one thing. Look for him first. Be concerned with him first. Everything else will be added unto you. So God is saying, really, I want y'all to just make room. Don't worry about it. Because look at this. If I take care of my relationship with God. 
If I trust in the Lord with all of my heart, if I lean and depend on him, if I move when it says move, see, God will whisper and tell me what to do for Sheila. He'll tell me what to do for my daughter, Christian. He'll tell me what to preach on Sunday. He'll tell me how to treat my co-workers on Monday. God will order my step if I put him first. Instead of trying to figure everything out. Because I'm going to mess up at some point. So God says, I want you to make room. Make space. Clear the table. Don't be so concerned about what me. God says me. Somebody say God. God. Period. Period. Just God. Just God. So when we look at Psalm 63. Let me know the background story is this is David running. David in the desert. Now, some theologians say that David is running from Saul, but I agree with those, those that say that he's running from his son Absalom because later on in that chapter, he says the king. He's referring to himself. So David is in a dry place. He's running. And you know, oftentimes, and it's sad, but God has to use that T word. That little seven letter word. Trouble. We don't even like to say it. I'm stuttering. Say it. We, don't want, we don't want to say it. We don't want to have it. We don't want to go through it. But oftentimes God will use to get your attention. Consequences. Plain old trouble. That thing we don't want. That thing they don't, we don't want to go through. But God oftentimes gets our attention through trouble. Such is the case with David. He's been chasing. He's in a desert. But look at this. His, him being pursued causes him to seek God. He goes, oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek thee. How many of you seek God early in the morning? I like to talk to God when it's still dark outside. Early in the morning. Because I found out if I don't talk to God early before I really start my day, I don't know how that thing is going to roll. But you know what? When I talk to God first, when I put him first, it really doesn't matter how it rolls out because God is with me and God is taking care of me and God will prioritize it and God will fix it and God will make it smooth and God will work it out if I put him first. Hmm. So David is saying, early will I seek thee because David has cleared the table. Trouble has caused him to refocus. And reprioritize. He's early what I say. Look at this. He says, my soul, my will, my emotions, my mind, my soul thirsts for you. Now see, we might not understand what David is talking about if that other stuff is still in the way. We don't really get what David is talking about if our main thought is dinner after church. If our main thought is the next football game. If our main thought is the next tailgating party, if our main thought is that how am I going to pay Alabama power on Monday morning, make room for God and God only. Has the Lord, let me just take a poll, has the Lord ever whispered an answer to your heart to a problem when you calm yourself down? God ever talked to anybody and, and told you what to do? And he told you what to say. And he told you how to say it. And he told you sometimes to be quiet and hold your tongue. He'll fix it. How many of you know God will fix it? Oh, he'll fix it. He'll work it out. He'll smooth it over. So David is saying, my, my soul thirsts for you in a, in a dry and thirsty place. He says, so even though I'm going through. I remember my relationship with you. I remember going to the sanctuary. I remember going to a secret place. I remember my personal relationship with you. Even though I'm going through problems and situations, I remember your still small voice. I remember my personal relationship with you. He says, so I went looking for you in the sanctuary to see your 
I went looking for you. God wants you to go back. How many of you have had an experience with God and you know it was God? You know it was God. I pray you have another one and another one and another one. But if you don't go back, look at how God brought you through. Look at how you felt when you experienced his presence. Anybody ever felt the presence of God in a powerful way? Yes, Lord. So David is going through trouble, but even in the middle of the trouble, he sees God. He gets God. And he does know that God will fix it. God will work it out. Even though he's being pursued, his life is, I don't mean somebody's just running after him. They're trying to kill him. But he still decided to focus on God. He says here, I'm looking for your power and your glory. Look at this. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. You see, when you begin to realize who he is, how many of you, and I know this, I think it happens with age. <laughs> I guess. Uh, but how many of you know God in a better way? A better way than you did 20 years ago? A more intimate way? How many of you don't get so freaked out over every little thing anymore? Because you have experience with the Father. And you know he's going to work it out some way. And that's it, Mrs. Brown. He's already worked it out. He's just waiting for us to walk it out. There's something about our God. Something about our Savior. So this is based on, this psalm is based on a personal relationship and personal victories. He's seen God move in his life. Hmm. It's 11.43. How many of y'all have a watch on? How many of you... What time did we start service today? Okay, 10.45 ago. I don't know, Pastor. I just slide on in when I get 10.45. It's about 11.43 right now. We keep track of time, don't we? We measure things by time. God gives us how many hours in a day? 24 hours. Now, if you really want to get techno, technical with it, 10% of that belongs straight to him, if you want to be technical about it. God gives us time. And that commodity that he gives us that we can never get again. I tell people all the time, you know, I... I can give some money. So I can get some more money. I can get some more friends. But I can't get any more. Yes. So instead of squandering our time worrying. I saw something interesting on, online the other day. If you got time to worry. You got time to pray. Yes you do. Because it's all time. Time. How much time. Do you spend with God? Now really, not necessarily the, the amount, but how much quality time do you spend with God? I remember when I first saw it in the, in the ministry or first getting really, really close to God, I would get early in the morning from about 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. That was my time because I knew the phone, where the phone shouldn't ring. The phone's not going to ring. I knew you know, Sheila was going to be asleep and all of that, so I could just spend some quality time with God, some time with God. And I rolled off some of that, those long periods of time, I rolled off that for a long time. I'm, so I'm not necessarily saying the amount of time, but the quality of time that you spend with God. So David said, early in the morning will I seek you. See, today's sermon is not about anything but your and my personal relationship with God. This, all of this is just supposed to remind us what we need to do and what we should be doing. Spending time. Time with God. Time with God. So watch your time. Allow 
God to be the prioritizer of your time. Hmm. Y'all might not know it, but I don't know if you can see it, but right on the edge of this lectern right here, there's a small wooden cross. Can y'all see that? You see? Hmm. You see it because you're sitting close, Ms. Brown, right? Now, most of y'all didn't see it. Some of y'all can't see it right now. Amen. <laughs> but most of y'all didn't see it because you weren't looking for it. David said, I went to the sanctuary looking for God. When you come into this sanctuary, who are you looking for? Friends, that's okay. Family, that's okay. Who are you looking for? How often do we go into God's house just to socialize? How often do we pass by God's house and say, oh, there's my church. Look for God. That's what I'm trying to say. Look for him 24-7. If you look for God, I guarantee you, you will find him. You will see him in everything. You will see him in people. Those people who kind of get on your nerves, you'll even see God in them. You'll see God moving through every circumstance. You'll see God moving everywhere if you begin to look for him. If we begin to prioritize not all that stuff on those on our list, but prioritize God, we'll see it. That's how God can touch your heart to bless somebody that you think shouldn't still need to be blessed. God can touch your heart to bless somebody on the side of a road. God can touch your heart to bless that rascal, that family member that keeps spending up your money. Look for God and say, Father, what would you have me to do? Lord, you know what I want to do, but what would you have me to do? It's about you. I heard a preacher say this and it blew my mind. Y'all, oftentimes we have stopped God flowing to other people. Say, for instance, God told me to give Tony some money. And I'm looking at Tony and say, he's got a nice suit and nice shoes and nice tie. Tony doesn't need any money. God, I ain't giving Tony nothing. <laughs> but, and I'm just using this for illustration purposes. But say for instance that I don't know Brenda, but Tony knows Brenda. When I heard this, uh, this passage, it blew my mind. See, I'm trying to figure out Tony's situation. But see, if I just hear from God and obey God and do that and see, Tony hears from God and Tony says, Brenda needs some help. So I'm up here trying to size up everything with Tony and it wasn't even about Tony. I'm blocking some stuff. So if I don't have a relationship with God, I can't hear. And if I can't hear, I can't do and I'm disobedient, and God is saying, I gotta figure out another way to bless Brenda because Pastor came here. Make room. That's all I'm trying to tell you today. Make room. Clear out your schedule. If you don't have time to pray, y'all know you're just too busy. And you're talking to the king of busy. But you have to make sure that you spend quality time with God and make room, make space for him. Many of you know there's a um, popular, a blessed young man, a popular uh, gospel artist by the name of Jonathan McReynolds. He has a song called Make Room. Uh, he says, I find space for what I treasure. I make time for what I want. I choose my priorities. Jesus, you're my number one. So I will make room for you. 
I will prepare for two so that you can realize you can have room in me. In me. I'm talking about personal relationship with God. This is something between you and the Father. Jesus died so we could have that kind of close relationship with God. So you can go to your father and tell him all about it. Go to God. Listen to him. Be led by him. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I just came to tell you today, clear your schedule. Make room. Amen. Praise the Lord. If there's anyone, let's all stand up all over the church. If there's anyone under the sound of my voice, If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, this is your time to come unto him. If there's anyone at all. You say, Pastor, I heard you today. I want that type of relationship with God. It begins with the relationship with his son, Jesus. If you want to get to know God, Jesus himself said, no man, woman, boy, girl can come to the Father except by me. Through Jesus. If you want a relationship with God, it begins with accepting Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. If this is you, now is the time to come. Now is the time to come. Don't wait. Nothing is promised. Do what you need to do while you have time. If there's anyone, this is your opportunity to come. If there's anyone that would like to join the church, You want to become a member of St. John's African Methodist Episcopal Church. This is your opportunity to come. To come and link up with this local household of faith. Amen. But we could just pray together. And repeat after me if you mean it. Amen. Lord God. I repent. You know Lord. I don't have to call the list. You already know. But right now, Lord, I repent for my lack of an intimate relationship with you. I have put other things. I have put other people before you. And I'm sorry. You are all I need thank you Lord for sending Jesus thank you Jesus for sending the Holy Ghost thank you Lord for caring enough about me to send your son to die for me so set my priorities straight get me back in line show me how to put you first and second and third and fourth show me how to prioritize you in Jesus name amen amen all right we didn't get beat up too bad did we if our hearts and minds are clear let us praise God from whom all our blessings flow Thank you for blessing us with a mindset to move things out of the way, to make room for you. Now, Lord God, 
bless us, cover us as we depart this sanctuary, but never from your holy presence. Keep us safe in all of our ways. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the delivering. Thank you, Lord God, for being yourself in us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people agreed by saying... Have a blessed week in the name of Jesus.